Joining me now, Ohio Congressman and Energy and Commerce Committee member Bill Johnson. Congressman, the American people should be grateful if this thing fails, will it? Well, we certainly hope so. Uh, you know, this is this is reckless spending, Dagan. Uh, it's going. It's social reengineering. Is what it really is. Uh, it's going to cause taxes to go up on everyone, all Americans. It's going to cost. Uh, uh, more at the gas pump, more at the grocery store. Inflation is going to continue to rise. This is not good for the American people. And I sure hope that uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema stand their ground. Steve Forbes, jump in. Uh, Congressman, in terms of uh, uh, what can be done at the border, is there anything Congress can do, hearings or whatever? Can you to highlight what's happening there? and uh, what that's doing well, with COVID. And uh, Biden has a vaccine mandate, but not for people who enter the country illegally. Yeah, you know, isn't it, isn't it odd that they're letting people flow across the border uh, with, uh, with all kinds of health conditions, including COVID. Uh, and we've got, uh, we've got vaccine mandates that are keeping people from working here at home. We got ships out in the ocean that can't get to docks because the dock workers aren't there. Uh, we've got airlines that we suspect are, 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 are canceling flights because pilots are pushing back on a vaccine mandate. And yet the Biden administration uh, refuses to, uh, to, to look at what's happening with COVID coming across our border. Look, right now, the, the, the Democrats hold the majority in the House. They determine the, uh, the hearing agenda. But certainly, we have been calling for a return to policies that will secure our border. Let's uh, revoke the catch and release uh, program. Let's reinstate the stay in Mexico program. And let's get back to building the border wall that will keep us secure. Those are the things that will, that will, uh, that will help in stopping this, this surge across our southern border. It is a crisis. Uh, Lee Carter, polling wise, what is having the most damaging effect on Biden and company and their polls? I think I would argue it would be inflation, but particularly oil and gasoline prices with crude oil is now it was briefly above $82 a barrel. You've got gasoline prices at a seven year high. Lee, how do you see it? I think inflation is driving sentiment right now more than anything. You've got 70% of Americans or more, depending on the polling that you're looking at, that are saying, I feel the impact of inflation on my monthly bills, whether that's their groceries, their electric, their utilities, their gas across the board, people are feeling it. And on top of that, they're looking at economic numbers that aren't necessarily good. We're hearing jobs aren't as, as, as projected. We're seeing shortages across the board. There's supply chain issues. All of these things are things that are impacting people in their daily lives and making them feel less optimistic. We're seeing a trend towards people are feeling less optimistic about the future than they have in years. It's way worse than it was under, under Trump. And across the board, when you look at every issue, COVID, the economy, foreign policy, taxes, immigration, the border, every single one, the Biden administration is underwater. And it's a real, real mm -hmm. issue for Democrats going into the midterms. At the same time, though, Democrats are still ahead in the generic ballot by two to three points, depending on the generic ballot that you're looking at. So Republicans have some work to do as well. And I think that comes down to Republicans need to make the case on what they're going to do different than what we're seeing today. Is it going back to Trumpism? Is it going back to right. something else? What does the future look like? Republicans need to make the case for themselves. Congressman, on that note, final word to you, sir. Yeah, I, I, you know, I would agree. And I think Republicans have made the case. You know, under the previous administration, we had the best economy that we've had in 50 years. Lowest taxes, best border security, uh, best, uh, highest degree of national security. Uh, there are good policies that came out of the previous administration that we need to go back to. When have we ever seen an economy tank in, in eight or nine months, like the Biden administration has done. This is, this is unbelievable. Congressman Bill Johnson, thank you so much for being here this morning. We'll see you soon.